So as I'm sure many of you are aware now, for the past few years, it has been a very commonly debated topic as to whether or not an iPad Pro can truly replace the functionality of a laptop. And personally, I haven't been too involved in this as I usually have a 16 inch MacBook Pro and an 11 inch iPad Pro that I carry around with me at all times. And I'll obviously use the laptop for laptop things, and the iPad for iPad things. However, about a month ago, I invested in a 12.9 inch iPad Pro and Apple's portfolio keyboard case to replace my 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I went ahead and sold my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So the only laptop I've been using is this iPad. And in this video, I'll explain to you guys whether or not I feel like the iPad Pro can truly replace a laptop in 2021. So for those of you who are new to the channel, my name's Nathan and I am a college student majoring in filmmaking. So obviously I need to use a laptop for a lot of different things as I'm constantly having to write short films or even edit things on the go. So it might seem like kind of a ridiculous idea for me to go ahead and buy an iPad to replace a workhorse of a machine like a 16 inch MacBook Pro. But in order to explain my thought process, I'm going to have to give a little more depth on the device itself. So Apple obviously advertises the iPad is a truly full-fledged replacement for a laptop. And to achieve this, it has the M1 processor. The one I have has two terabytes of storage. It's in the silver color. And it also has the white portfolio keyboard case that gets really dirty really easily, which is very unfortunate for when I make these videos as a lot of these stains are permanent and I could not get them off no matter how hard I tried. So I apologize for any dirt that you guys might see on the white case. Regardless, the iPad I have here is also the cellular version, which I have not used at all. And unless you, for some reason, don't carry your phone with you, I would not recommend spending the money on as for me, it just has not been very useful. So onto my thoughts in regard to how the device has performed. I am actually thoroughly impressed with how well it has done as I didn't really think that it would truly be able to replace my 16 inch MacBook Pro I've now mentioned a million times. But the screen size of 12.9 inches is really nice as I'm a multitasker so I usually have two tabs open at any given time and the size of the screen works really well for this task as it's not enormous to where it takes up a ton of room in my backpack like my old MacBook Pro did but it's also big enough to allow me to multitask. And I also really like the portfolio uh, keyboard case as I had my doubts in regard to that as I didn't like how small the mouse pad is and I still am not a big fan of it. I wish it was bigger, but it works fine and it's really not a big deal at all. It really doesn't affect me too much. And the keyboard is really nice. I like how clicky it is, but I also don't like how clicky it is at the same time because this uh, noise can be very rude I guess whenever I'm in a class and I have to type something is I feel it's a lot louder than most other keyboards in the room so it just makes me feel kind of strange I'm not really the kind of person who likes a ton of attention on me so I wish that the keyboard could be a little quieter but otherwise I'm really happy with how it's performed and I really like the way that the iPad looks also as I think that it looks very futuristic but it's also not over the top and looking really unique I just really like the hard edges on the iPad itself but the soft edges on the case and I think it all comes together with the Apple Pencil to look very nice. I was however initially extremely skeptical of the functionality of being able to use files and store files on this device as I have a pretty organized uh, file system that I use for everything from these videos here to school to uh, different projects that I could be working on for whatever reason. So I was very skeptical of how well the iPad could perform in this regard but it surprised me in just how well it did and it did a really good job as it has a full-fledged file system especially with the use of iCloud. Um, it's really wasn't a learning curve at all it was just like having a regular laptop which I absolutely love because I really did not want to have to spend an enormous amount of time trying to learn something new and that kind of brings me to my next topic of whenever I went from the MacBook Pro to the iPad Pro there was maybe maybe an hour of me just kind of messing around and trying to figure out what's different but otherwise it really wasn't a learning curve at all which I absolutely love because I like I said I just didn't want to have to spend a ton of time learning how to use something new which to me it can be very frustrating at times but going from a macbook to this is a breeze it's really easy to do and i'm really happy with the way apple has done that as i was worried that it would take a ton of time and what's really nice on top of this breeze of moving over is it has a ton of added functionality that a macbook doesn't have like a touch screen and 
uh, being able to use an Apple Pencil on it. And that touchscreen I mentioned is actually much more useful than I initially expected, as at first I thought I wouldn't like having one, as I can be a clean freak sometimes, so I didn't really want to have any fingerprints on my screen, but I hardly notice them at all whenever I'm using the device, and I actually do make use of the touchscreen while I'm working a lot more than I thought I would, as it can be really nice to pinch to zoom or unzoom, and it just kind of makes uh, working on it much more of a flow rather than having to just type in different inputs. And the Apple Pencil has been absolutely phenomenal for Photoshop on this giant screen. As like I mentioned earlier, I had an 11 inch iPad Pro before this 12.9 one and having the added size is kind of crazy in just how big it is, but being able to type a script and then pop the iPad off of the case and just start using Photoshop on the device is really nice. And I love the fact that I don't have to carry around two very expensive devices with me at all times to get my daily work done. I can just carry one, which kind of brings me to the main uh, topic of why I did this. It was so that I wouldn't have to carry around two huge expensive devices with me and just one and kind of combine them into one a centralized piece of technology. And the battery life of this device has been really good. It's not anything to get excited about, but it's also not bad. It has gotten me through two days of just taking notes uh, easily and playing games. However, that is not to say this device is perfect as it can get really, really expensive when you start factoring in the cost of the case, 12.9 inch size, and an Apple Pencil, and it starts getting on the level of an M1 MacBook Air or M1 MacBook Pro, which is raising an interesting debate of whether or not you should invest in the MacBook Pro or the iPad Pro as they both have their pros and they both have their cons. Personally, the iPad Pro has been perfect for me as I can utilize Photoshop and different things that the Apple Pencil brings to the table, but for some other people, there is a substantial argument to be made about investing in the MacBook over the iPad. But something new MacBooks have over the iPad is the added port situation as this device only has two USB-C ports, no headphone jack or anything of the sort. So you just have to get by with those two USB-C ports, which for me hasn't been a problem because I'm not connecting it to monitors or anything. I'm solely using it as a laptop and the only thing I have to connect to it is my Apple Pencil, the case, and a charger. So for me, it hasn't been a big deal at all, but I know this is a big deal to other people. And I'm not really a big fan of the weight distribution situation of the iPad Pro, as I can be typing with the device on my lap uh, a lot of the time, as some of the classes I have don't have those desks. So whenever I'm typing, the uh, iPad Pro wants to fall back, which is very frustrating, as you know, if, you, if someone calls your name and you look up, and the iPad can just fall and break right in front of you, which obviously would be detrimental. As I mentioned earlier, it is an extremely expensive device. So it's something worth noting. Not a deal breaker, and I'm not really sure how Apple would fix it without making the whole device more heavy than it already is, which it is pretty heavy for its size, but it is something worth mentioning. So in conclusion, can the iPad Pro replace a laptop in 2021? Obviously, this depends widely on what you're doing, but in my personal opinion, I absolutely think it can, especially if you have a MacBook before and you're used to only having those two USB-C ports, as a lot of MacBooks did only have those two USB-C ports. I am really happy with my investment into this device. It has been amazing for combining my iPad Pro and my MacBook Pro into one centralized device, but a big part of that is the fact that I don't have to edit videos on the iPad Pro anymore. I have a Mac Mini that I can edit videos on, so it's allowed me to take the best parts of the MacBook Pro 16 and the best parts of the iPad Pro 11 inch and combine it into this 12.9 inch amazing little device. Thank you so much for watching and please do consider subscribing as only 2% of the people who are watching are subscribed and as a small content creator like myself, any and all support really does help.